How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to The Big Thing. It is the Sith Council edition as we do our spoiler review slash discussion of The Acolyte Episode 6 streaming on Disney+. Plus. So thanks for joining us here today. Unfortunately, Steph couldn't be with us. It's myself and Mike Kalinowski, so enjoy. Um, anyway, we have a lot to talk about. We're, we're going to see. I, I haven't spoken to Mike about what he thought of this episode thus far. You guys saw my out of the, my immediate reaction. You guys saw my reaction to the episode in general. So we'll carry that over here today. If you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, hit that button, man. Subscribe to the channel. We get so much going on here, whether it's reactions, reviews, trailer reactions, out of the theater reactions. Um, but we also have been doing a lot more on interviews. Not only did we have on Jamie Campbell Bauer and Chris Mazzilli recently, we are going to have comedian Sam Morell on next Tuesday with myself and Roxy talking about his new comedy special that's going to be on Amazon. So make sure you, again, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that stuff, man. All right. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Let's do it. It's myself. It's Mike Kalinowski. Here we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the big thing. It is myself and Mike Kalinowski. We are reviewing, talking, discussing Acolyte episode six. Mike, I did yeah. my reaction to it last night, and I didn't know, I, you know, as I said last week going into it, who knows anymore we're going to get with this show, right? You, you just You just don't know. I will tell you this, and I don't know where, where you stand, but uh -huh. there, there's still a lot, and we'll talk about it. There's a lot of problems, a lot of issues with the show as itself, but nothing new that it hasn't already presented as far as the problems, the tone. Is, I still don't understand why the twins are the focus of this show uh, at all, but I will say this. This episode, to me, was the most intriguing. They finally kind of dove into the Sith stuff, and Manny, to me, is the star of this show now, now after two episodes, really liked what he was doing. He's not playing it overly like, look how angry I am. Look how angry I am. It's his manipulation through what the dark side is and trying to convert Osha to the dark side. I liked what he was doing. I liked that element of the show, but what say you? Um, I'm just more of the same. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe hey, this just the show's not for me. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like I was kind of, I, I think he, he's great in the role, but I'm also like, I feel like this is Kylo Ren 2.0. You it's see, all, I don't, I don't see that. I was worried about that, but I don't feel like it is. Like, because he, like you think angsty, he was as angry? Not as angry though. The angsty shirt off, sexy sit. Well, that guy, thing. Yeah, yeah that like, that that was unnecessary. That whole thing with the wall. She looked it, at his. She looked at his hog. By the way, she looked. Cloth. She looked at his hog once. If you look at it. There was, look at what? She looked at his hog. Oh, of course. <laughs> like when you, you when she walked hog? hog. When oh, it's hog. When when she when he walked when he walked out, you look you look at that scene for a split second, she was like this. Well, yeah. Hey. hey, look. Good for her. Yeah, um, good for her. But anyway. All right. So what we'll do, like we always do, is we'll What's go that? through the pictures themselves and and just kind of recap the episode and see what we think and we'll get the comments and all that and here we go so and as i said there is a lot in this episode you're still like oh man same people are waking up falling asleep waking it up again looking around and and i i i'm with you more and more though about what's what's the old republic uh jedi's name the high republic jedi's name the Vanestra? Are, I, i'm not i'm not i'm not vibing the performance mike i'm not vibing with that performance it's, that's it's the one that sticks out for me like it's very wooden. Uh, I'm just, yeah. And then you get uppity, uppity McJedi over there with her, the the, the cohort. Yeah, well, that guy does two of them together. That guy, that guy that she's with looks about as much of a Jedi as my accountant does. Okay, see, I don't want to say it. Like, anytime an actor is, but, like, I don't know what's going on with this episode, with this with this show and the casting. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Usually Star that guy, Wars. I, if that guy picks up a lightsaber next to me in a fight, I ain't fighting next to him. I'll say you can do my Jedi taxes for me, but you ain't. Yeah, I'm not fighting with you. I don't get it. I don't know if there's a lot going on. Like, they're. I, I know the Vanestra girl is Leslie Headland's partner. Oh, okay. So there was that. 
but like with him, I'm like, what's going on with like, who is this guy? Like, yeah. Well, let's let's get to some of these pictures. So here we go. We start out, and Osha is sleeping. She's taking a nice nap. She doesn't look hurt at all. She's really clean. Her makeup's fine. You know, not, I guess that while she was sleeping, um, Manny puts some makeup on her, and then she wakes up and she does this kind of like the way that she did wake up though did look like a very kind of Neo waking up out of the Matrix thing, which is kind of cool. But he stitched her up. She walks out, you know, and she sees it, this cloth. She puts on this outfit and very Ray-esque. And I did think initially this was Octu, but obviously it was yeah. not. It was not Octu, and it was indeed what I was told by our mutual friend PLD and a lot of other people, that this was actually the planet itself is... Baldem Baldemnik, which was an ocean planet adorned with rocky tropical islands in the Bacophysian system of the Uril sec sector located with the Outer Rim Territories. The, now, there was, now, despite the beauty of its giant rock cliffs, pristine beaches, and vast oceans, it was mostly of interest to a lot of the fisher folk, and, but until there was knowledge of the planet's rich deposits of cortosis, once fell into the hands of Sith Lords Darth Tenebris and Darth Plagueis. So that's maybe Leslie Headland indeed taking some of that stuff out there. But we have uh, we have Osha. She walks out. We see the planet. We see it in general, like, and it just says unknown planet. So we don't get the actual confirmation. But she's walking around in this kind of like Ray esque outfit, and then you get like these two birds chewing on rocks, and. I don't know. She's just staring off and said, "Well, what's going on? Who's over there? Let me go check, and we'll go. Talk, we'll talk to what's what's Manny's name? I don't even know. They don't even talk. What's his, what's his name? Darth what? Query? Something with the Q. Okay. Well, him. And then we get to the uh, now. This is to me, as I was saying to you before, they call him the stranger. Fine. So we'll call like him. That's the, the, that's what yeah. we'll that's what we'll call him in this. But so in this episode. Yeah, the stuff, the way that I'm going to rank because there was three storylines going on at the same time, right? There was okay. the stranger and uh, and o Osha, there was Saul and May, and then there was Venestra and um, and the accountant, right? So you right coming in dead last is Venestra and the accountant, dead last. <laughs> Who cares? The stuff that we'll, we'll talk about the stuff that they that they do at the end that is just. Uh, incredibly mind just baffling how you look at it and you're like wait a minute these are jedi and the stuff with may and saul there was a lot of good stuff there but there's a lot of frustrating stuff like how many times are we going to get saul almost telling the story of what happened and then something else happens gotta save that up for episode eight I know, and that's fine, but stop teasing. It's like every single, oh, I'm about to tell you, now I'm going to tell you, but you got to listen. I And thank God they didn't end it in the way that I thought they were going to end it. But I will say the most intriguing, and probably the reason why I liked the episode, because like I said, those other two storylines, I can pick to pieces for sure. But I really enjoyed the stuff that The Stranger was doing. And I think that he has stolen the show because... I did say it, and I stand by it even more after this, that the show should have been, once again, Jackie and Saul. That's the storyline. Those are the two. It's Qui-Gon and, and, and Obi-Wan to where they're doing this true detective like murder mystery thing to try to find out what's going on. And the whole time, the stranger is trying to recruit Jackie, and he gets Jackie on that island. He's talking to her. And that that's – you don't need these yeah. twins. These, twin, these twins have, are bringing nothing to this show. They're bringing nothing to this show, and I don't care about their story. There's nothing, there's nothing intriguing about it. I'm curious what the pitch was, what You're, Headland yeah. went in to pitch Lucasfilm with the story. Like, I don't know. Unless maybe because they thought maybe the Jackie Saul thing would have been like, well, we've seen this before. So let's see it again. We've seen uh, Sith. We've seen Sith. I don't know. Do it differently. We've but, seen yeah. the Ray and Kylo now with yeah. the Stranger in Osha. We've I'm seen like, tons of stuff that's already right. in this show. I would much rather see. And and Daphne Keene, I feel, was, was, I mean, it was a death. You're like, no, but it was, she was wasted. She was yeah. wasted. And uh, you saw what, she's, what she did in Logan. I'll be honest, after watching this series... I think she's a much stronger actor than than um, uh, Amanda Stenberg. I think she's a much stronger, and I feel like they didn't utilize her at all. And you could have done that storyline. But anyway, 
nonetheless, the stuff that they are doing, the reason that I did dig what they going into the Sith stuff and having that conversation and, and peeling back the layers a little bit, which they don't, they didn't do in the last episode, which was one of my issues with the, the episode was we didn't, we just had a big fight the whole time. There were not a lot of layers. There were some layers in this episode with, with this particular storyline. Yeah. All right. Before we move on, I wanted to also tell you guys, I told you about them last week and I got to tell you about them again, nerd armor and this bad boy here. I love these sabers and a bunch of you got them last week and i changed the link up to make sure that you can get right there and go check it out but check them out and of course check out tushy tell you about both of them right now so many comments lately about everybody that's buying the tushies and i see why you're buying them i love them you love them chris carr loves them everybody loves the tushies i'm so excited to get you guys to get a tushy that i almost thought about doing this from the bathroom but then i was like no i want you to get it it's terrible that's a terrible thing for me to do but i want to do it because i want to show you how much i love the tushies check this out alone look at this just open up the toilet lid. You spray the water right in your tush. It's wonderful. Look at that. That's how it works. It's that easy. You put it on the toilet. You open it up. You spray the water on your butt. It's lovely. It's going to change the way that you think about cleaning up after a spicy dump in a coffee shop or a porter potty during a music festival. You're going to want to take Tushy with you everywhere, and thankfully you can. Because... The Tushy Travel, it's collapsible, it's durable, and discreet portable bidet that gives you the most confident clean on the go. I keep telling people about these things. Everybody are getting the Tushies now, and everyone's like, oh, man, can I use your code? Can I use your code? Of course you can. It's the best. I got one. I've got two in my house right now, and it is so wonderful. We feel classy in this house. It's got a three-stream nozzle for a total clean. It's got a new air mesh bag for discreet travel, faster dry time. It comes in five new colors. Every Hello Tushy bidet comes with a 30-day hassle, free return, and 12-month warranty. So stop wiping until you bleed. Join the 2 million butts who have already made the switch to Tushy. For a limited time only, our listeners get 10% off your entire order, but you got to use that code big thing. 10% off hello tushy h e l l t u s h y.com with the promo code big thing. Nerd Armor, and I told you guys about this. Like I was contacted by Nerd Armor and look at this. This is Absolutely, like this is a Darth Malgus saber. Is that it making noises? Yeah. So, so check this out. This is from Nerd Armor, and it like lights up. Oh, cool! It's, yeah, and it's you can change. You you go to the app itself, and you can change like the settings. You can change the color, um, and it is it's absolutely. That's pretty awesome. incredible it's pretty incredible and it like you connect it to the app you can do different sounds it's got like if i have i i do it towards the red one also the red saber and you can put palpatine's voice on it which is amazing um and you can do you can get all these different sound fonts which is great because if you buy a pixel or a profile saber the customers get over 150 dollars in uh in custom sound bites from jlorian.com and you can load that into your saber's card it's it's pretty awesome you can you can choose they have all these different hilts you can get jedi you can get sith um and i put the link in the description and you can definitely get a um get a a code there from me because it's really really amazing i love it steph what did you i mean you're looking at this what do you what do you think about this it's so cool i feel like I shouldn't do this, but if I ever had a home invasion, I feel like yeah. that would be pretty. It's the best. Optimal. Uh, it'd be an optimal weapon. I absolutely like. Yeah, when when they got in contact with me, I was like, yeah. And and when I was talking to the guy who who owns the company, he's, he's I, he goes, um, well, what would you want? I said, surprise me, and I was like, but go to the dark side. You know, let's do dark side stuff. And he sent me this one and this hilt. I mean, look at the hilt. It's so like, cool it's, yeah it is. it's so legit it's so legit and i told him i was like holy i go i love this thing I was yeah like, my new office i was i was you know there's a lot of like really legit business people in this office that i'm in new york and i'm like walking around with like a lightsaber like just like <laughs> i'm like pay your taxes um so <laughs> anyway all right thank you again to our friends over at nerd armor and hello tushy loving having them on board make sure as always you want to help the show out that's how you do it. And who wouldn't want one of these? I mean, come on, check it out. All right, well, let's talk about, so when you get the next, so the, the what happens now is you know, we're on the ship and we see the accountant in his Jedi robe and here is Saul trying to speak with him. This was one of the frustrating things for me. Like, I think uh, that yeah. he, he did a great job 
in his, and there's a great scene that he has where he kind of breaks down and he loses it a bit and he's he's kind of his emotions get the better of him and he's slamming down. I thought it was great and I think he's doing a, a fantastic job uh, in in this show for what he's given. But this this scene was one of those scenes where I'm like, okay, the first thing you say, the first thing you say is, hey, uh, my whole team was murdered by a Sith. Even if you can't break it out, because clearly they heard something because the accountant yeah. comes back in and says, uh, well, we didn't get much of it, but we did hear that the whole team was slaughtered. So say a Sith murdered my, my well, you whole know why crew. they didn't do that, right? Why? The writing. I know. I know. They can't, they can't say Sith because then the Jedi know that they're Sith and they're not extinct for I know, a millennia. But they like, don't, don't have them get, don't have them get in touch then because I know you, we are, but we're in this, the, the thing that I guess that what frustrates me is that they wanted to do Sith. They wanted to do this Jedi, whether you're canon, your legends, your characters, ages, I don't give a shit, but you are in a sandbox that has parameters. And now they go through all these little things and hoops to get around the fact that he's not letting him know it's Sith and he's not going to talk to him because now our communications are right. But you said, yeah, hey, guys, Sith, we're in trouble. Send help now. But that and if Done. that and if that was and if they would have left it at that, if they were in this episode, they would have left it at that. Then it's like, OK, fine. They're kind of trying to get around it. But the ending with with Venestra and the accountant alone, well, let me tell you that we'll, we'll get but we'll get to that in a second. But the but. What we will get to in the stuff, the positive side of this scene is that once again, Saul is just doing great work. You believe him that he's just completely just he's great. He's tortured. And then the shit rat is running around the joint, you know, sniffing farts or whatever he's doing. And he's and, and this little this little thing knows for some reason he, he he doesn't tell he doesn't try to tell Saul he just tries to like poke around and then instead of biting or whatever he's doing with his rat teeth he stomps on her foot later but we'll we'll get to that so he's he's spying on her and this this scene is because you know you can, like here's the thing that I'm I'm excited to see because I feel like this is what they're setting up and I hope they deliver with this they set up in the beginning that May is the bad one. Osha is the good one, and then Switcheroo, May is going to be the one who uh, who learns more about what really happened, understands the Jedi, goes the Jedi way, becomes the good one, where Osha is corrupted and and turned into the acolyte, and ultimately becomes the the apprentice of uh, of of the stranger. Right? That that's what it looks like where they're going with it. But what I don't understand is why do you then in episode. Uh, Three, no, four. She, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm turning myself in. I'm not going to do this anymore. I got to be with my sister. And then she walks up and she's going to stab Saul in the back with a knife. That's what I'm saying. Two episodes ago, she was like, we're done. I can't do this anymore. Nah, this is wrong. And now I'm going to kill the guy. Like, what is going on? It's, what, are, what are we doing? Yeah, it's like, but they get, the two sabers are there. And she, but she, but she's. This is the this is why I battled back and forth with this one because then you have the moment of her okay we're starting to see a little bit more from May to where she is like not completely she couldn't go through with it again still so this is the breakdown scene that Saul has and it, it was a great piece of acting and he's just so challenged by everything going on and we're gonna finally hopefully in episode seven learn what the hell this guy has been holding and what kind of Problem, and then we get the little shit rat running around again, and I'm pretty sure he's just taking a dump in a closet somewhere. Um, but either way, he he comes on out, and he's now now he's doing like a little funky dance, and he steals the iPhone, which has been broken, the iPhone robot, and and you know he's very excited that he found the iPhone robot. But then we jump back to the planet, and we have OSHA, and this is where we see the scene. Now, you know, people were complaining about the you get the Kylo kind of shirt off scene and. It, it's it's whatever it, I can understand. I don't care. Who cares? But it just seems like we just went through this again. Like, uh. yeah, it, it doesn't. It that one. It didn't bother me as much. It was a little. It doesn't bother it, me. It's, it's. I don't necessarily know if you needed to have. You could have had that same scene not in the water. Um, but I also want to have people stop commenting when they go. Well, this show is clearly just for kids. What kids? What like. That 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 was a, that yeah. was a, it was a sexualized scene. It wasn't for it wasn't for a six or eight year old, maybe teenagers. 
but it's not for a six or eight year old. So let's not let's not do that because they're clearly trying to go for an, like anytime someone like you lose me when you write you're talking about a show for kids. This particular show is not meant for kids. You've got cracked necks. You got dead people out there. It's it, a default mechanism that a lot of people def- like. If you want to criticize something or something, they default to it's a show. It, it, at its core, Star Wars is for kids. It's gone beyond that. It, it really has. Yeah. It's just, it's not. And it, and, that, and well, it, and they're also that's also said by people who are not parents. If that's true, that's yeah, I can right. guarantee you, the majority of people who write that comment do not have kids because I would not let my six year old watch this show. I wouldn't. Okay. I'd let my my twelve year old watch it, but I wouldn't let my six year old watch this show. Mm-hmm. And. And it's one because it's I don't want her seeing those uh, certain images of, of heads getting cracked and you know the, the guy with his shirt off in the water she's not going to understand the, the the tones of what they're going for but it right. clearly is meant for that and yeah. but it's also less about that inside of this particular scene I didn't it's he's he's floating around in the water he's doing his little bath and while it, <laughs> while he's doing it though. You know, this is a, this is why I like this character. He's testing her out. He knows. You know, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll show her the goods, and she. <laughs> And she, though, she's like, for some reason, wearing the, the Ray outfit, I, I, or kind of. I don't understand why they put her in this outfit. But she, she grabs the saber. You know, I love this whole thing. It's like, it feels good, doesn't it, having that in your hand again? And there's the beginning of this relationship between the two of them, this kind of reverse Last Jedi Oct 2 thing that was kind of going on, except he wants to train her and he wants to show her the, the ways of the dark side. And he realized that May was the wrong choice and Osho was the one. And he's, and she's, she's, got, she's in her stance and they have this whole kind of conversation as he starts to manipulate her in that kind of Palpatine Anakin way. You know, and, yeah. I, and I, I dug that. I think I, that's, when I was watching the show, I'm going, okay, like, as, as I've said earlier in this episode, replay, let's say it was, it was Jackie in episode three, they do the, they're doing this whole investigation for the murders, and then she, she starts to get a little bit more corrupted by this dude, and you start to see this, and these are the conversations he's having, and you make it 45 minutes to these, these again, 37-minute episodes. You get nothing. You get Right as it starts to get going, it's like... Pfft. Yeah, but what, what did you feel about the Sith side of it, Mike? Um, I, I'm just having a very hard time not, it's not even a hard time. It, that's a stupid thing to think about. Like it just, I'm like him sitting there towards the end, putting his helmet together like Kylo Ren did. The music, even last episode, Kylo Ren's music popped in. It's just like I feel like we're back with. Remember with Mandalorian, every episode or every new show is like, oh, here's an older guy with a young kid tagging him along, and then right. Boba Fett did that, and then Obi Wan yeah. did the that. wolf, so the lone cub and wolf. Thing. Yeah, so now we're doing the the tortured. Sith with the young apprentice and trying to get them with the, see their sides. It's like, I don't especially know, though, this is all I, in the era of the Disney Star Wars era. Yeah, it's but I see, like, I like I this. We'll, we'll differ on this one because I, I like that they're doing this because there hasn't been enough exploration inside of the Sith this way. Yeah, this has give, been, me a, give me a female Sith corrupting some dude. Change it up. I mean, they, they, they do. I mean, they've done enough of that in, in this show, I think, already. But like if if you have get I think for me. Where and then that was the other thing that people were saying last week. He never said he was a Sith. He, you, the Jedi would call me a Sith. He, he's he's following the rule of two. He has a helmet on his head. He's got a red saber. What, what, what are you talking about? Like when people are like, he never really officially said he was a Sith. It's like give me a break. He said he said if you're going to give me a label, you're going to pretty much call me a Sith. Now the other pushback to that is that they think that whoever his master might be, and we'll get right. into that. Or, or whether it was whoever his Jedi Master was or whoever his current Master is. PLD had a good theory this morning when I was talking to him, and he said that he thinks that potentially that he was um, he was kind of ousted by his Sith uh, Master and that he was replaced by Plagueis. That's, that was the... That that's what PLD said, but I don't I don't know if they're gonna I don't now, I think that's given the uh, given the writing well, team too on, much. You credit. know this way better than I do. Plagueis, this yeah. character of Plagueis that yeah. everyone talks about. Yeah. Has the, he been introduced anywhere in what is Disney Star Wars canon that they could use this character? Or if, yeah, like episode, has he been in Rebels, Clone three. Wars, Episode Three? What? They mention him. They mention him. They mention him. Yeah. Does he you ever actually? Has he actually ever shown up? No. No. All right. He's never. Shown I, up. I I think that is 
I don't think they would ever introduce him. I just don't. I just they should, uh, but not. I, I I'll be honest with you though. Now after sp- six episodes into this show, I don't want him to show up. I don't want him to show up in this show. It's like it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. the The James Lucerno book of Darth Plagueis. Is, is but a, does that count? No, it doesn't. Okay, it's, there you go. It's, no, but the book itself is about as gangster of a story. Like it was like when they pitched as they were pitching the Boba Fett show as the gangster soprano yeah. story. That book is a gangster and it's dark and it is the it is the manipulation and the inner workings of the Sith and how he took Palpatine on and how Palpatine rose and the and like the the one up in the levels and the power of two and how, and the corruption inside of the brain in general of what you're trying to accomplish and how power can override and then right behind you is someone else who wants it more. It's a brilliant novel and it's a and a, and it would be it would translate into an absolutely wonderful miniseries and the 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 tone of it is drastically different than the tone in this show and I don't okay. think having that character now granted they would they would do it differently and you know you know what it remind me of. I would be worried because in the way that you you like the Netflix Daredevil series, right? Loved it. Right. Did you like how Kingpin was in Hawkeye? Right. That's how I feel yeah. I would feel. You would feel less of that because you've got nothing to base it on. You've right. Got, like, I, I, would, I would be like, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. And I, I don't want to see it. But anyway, it seems like there's a lot more history with what he's got. But as we... It, yeah, go ahead. It's well, it's interesting to me because I'm seeing a really interesting thing happen with the fandom of Star Wars that love this show. Parallel to what I do, they are inferring so much into every episode, and I I feel like this was me circa 2016 where I spent that entire year defending BVS, and I would make arguments, but I would be inferring things about the character from the comics and the movie, other like, and people would go, Mike, that's great. We're basing this off of what we're given in the movie of this character of Batman. And I would say, but yeah, we don't understand this. It's like, yeah, that's because you know the character in the history, and it could mean that. But we're not – so for me, all these things that are happening are great that the fans love this stuff, but they're pulling from everything. Oh, Vanestra does this in the High Republic, and that's where she does this. And Cortosis, the metal, is this. And like none of that we're given in this show, and that's what we have to go off of, of this show and what's being put to us. So all this stuff that all these Star Wars fans are inferring, and that's because we love the oh, the lore and this and that's like that's but the there trick. is no lore. That's the trick of what Lucasfilm did with the canon stuff, and now why I know, I but there is no, no lore but that's why, anymore. No, so I agree, but that's ultimately that. that's ultimately why I bailed on it, right? Because I was like, because the hardcore Star Wars fan who is reading those books and reading those comics and everything too, like they know they know so much about that character. They're like, oh, this is amazing. This is this. It's it's not put into that series at all and it's and it's never referred to in any of the things because a lot of the times whoever the director or writers are they don't pay attention to that stuff so it's like if the, and and if they negate it they're like oh yeah well it doesn't really count for our show right in the same way that i'm always wondering how and what they're going to do with k2so it's going to make it's going to prove a lot for me in the canon side of it with and or season two because okay. the in k2so uh-huh. uh, the comic book they had the two of them meet after this like jailbreak or whatever happens. He's and he's, 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 there's these other Jedi. That, I can't remember who were with him. Not Jedi, but there's not Jedi. But there's some. There's like, these two alien species that are with them, and this whole this whole thing that happens. And the way that you can make me go, okay, you're still paying attention to canon without it. By the time you start the series, him and K two S O have already met, and you don't see the meeting itself. But I feel. That they're gonna, Tony Gero is gonna go. Do I? Hey, do I have to listen to this comic book? Nah. Do what you want to do. They, they don't care. They yeah. don't care. So, in the same way that a lot of people who are really diving into these books and go, "Oh, Vanestra, this, Vanestra, she did this, she did that." It's great that that elevated it for you, and that you know a little. It's, it's like when I read Catalyst, the the book for before uh-huh. Rogue One. It elevated Rogue One for me even more so when I when I saw it because I knew so much about the history of Krennic. And 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 her father and all this stuff and I knew so much about it so it elevated it for me, but as I watch it I'm like in no world uh, did anybody who's making that movie pay attention <laughs> or even talk to anybody from that book 
Like yeah. I know it. It's like it's like it's almost. I might as well just made up the story myself and had and had in my head what I thought it was. But it's a way for them to make money and sell and sell yeah. and sell books. And that, that, that's 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 the business. But I just felt it was a, a dishonest thing and how they said everything was going to count and everything is going to we're going to like make it all matter. It doesn't matter in the same way that you know the the Vanestra stuff for. <laughs> these novels don't matter yeah yeah um all right we got more to talk about inside of this episode because there is a lot of to me a lot of good stuff that they did with the sith stuff and we'll get into it but before we do i want to tell you as i tell you each and every episode about our wonderful sponsors and we got two great ones you're very familiar with ag1 i've told you about ag1 many times over and built who keep coming back because you guys keep getting them and i love that so here is ag1 here's built and I got to tell you about AG1. You guys know AG1. I mean, if you've been listening to this show long enough, you know that I love AG1. And people keep asking me. They notice. John even said when I started, as I look, new look, yeah. 20 pounds I lost. One of those reasons, AG1 became part of my routine. Because at, you know, for a long time, I wasn't paying attention to what was going on in my body. It just wasn't. I, for me, I read labels. I verify that everything is up to the quality I need. And that is why I've stayed with AG1 for as long as I have. It is a research-backed uh, foundational nutrition supplement, and it delivers daily nu nutrients, gut health support, and it's backed by multiple research studies so you can trust what you're putting into your body. Because I I do, I like coffee. I normally, I used to drink so much coffee to keep up, but I don't need it anymore, not as much. Because after drinking AG1, I have realized that I have all this energy and I need less coffee to power my day. It turns out I'm not alone. Because in a research study, 91% of people noticed they needed less coffee after 60 days of drinking AG1. 97% of people in a research study felt more energy after 30 days of drinking AG1. That's crazy. 91% of participants noticed that they need less coffee after 60 days of drinking AG1. That's me. <laughs> energy is a majorly important reason why it comes to... I, I need so much energy for parenting. I can tell you that right now. AG1 contains ingredients to sustain energy so you can be the best version of yourself within each day. And it really has worked for me and it's helped me on the plane, everything. It's easy, it's satisfying to start your journey with AG1. But if you go to AG1 and you, you can get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase, you gotta go to drinkag1.com slash big thing drinkag1.com slash big thing. It's the one product I trust to support my whole body health. It is. It's AG1. All right, you know what stinks? When you're stuck in a loop of rent payments, you're just watching your money vanish into thin air. It's the worst. It's time to turn the rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. How do you do that? That is where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Doesn't matter. Even if you're rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards, it's got your back. They're going to mail the check for you. It's like basically having a personal rent paying assistant. It's the best. Every month you pay your rent and you watch the points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points towards a flight or a hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash big thing. That is joinbilt.com slash big thing. So use our URL so they know that we sent you. That's joinbuilt.com slash big thing. Start earning points with your rent payments today. All right, thank you to our friends over at AG1 and Built. I am excited to have them both. We've had AG1 on the show for such a long time because you guys continue to get them. Built is a newer sponsor, but they came back. Why? Because you guys have been signing up. You guys have been really uh, using it, and it has been beneficial to you. So that helps the show. Thank you for doing that, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so as we continue on, now we get the, there's the ship again. We're back to this three-story prong. And now we get May, who's just kind of doing side-eye views. And I, and this is where I think that I started to get more, because when, I first, when the show first started, Mike, I was like, yeah, I kind of like what Amanda is doing with the, with the performance. And it's kind of becoming less and less for me, in the, in, because it's, it's really just eye acting. There's really nothing too 
the performance, I don't think. And it's just, it's a lot of eye acting. And even when it's Saul who's powering this scene, and it's a good scene where he's just, he, this guy is just burdened by all this stuff that we don't yet know, but his emotions coming through, and he pulls Osha, he, who he thinks Osha is, pulls Osha in to give her a hug. And it's like this moment. But then as you look at May, it's just kind of this like side eye thing. But I know what it's intended to do, right? It's intended to say, she's curious here about what and you're ultimately going to see the turn uh, of may because we already and i but i think they shot their load already with it because we know that she already had she already had a, 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 a an epiphany that she wanted to turn herself in so we know that she has it in her to say oh i you know this guy maybe he's not as bad as i think I, i'm listening to you talk and it makes me think like why does she want to kill him anyway do we know why we don't really know like, does, she doesn't think that he's the reason that the temple burned down, right? Like, well, why? You're, you're not wrong. Like, we don't really have a clear answer. That's as what I'm saying. Why, and right? everyone, like, I feel like, oh, I sit back and I I, I love to go on Twitter either the, before the episode airs or, like, right around the time. And I don't, usually people don't spoil. Sometimes they do. Uh, but I like to see the people that love Star Wars and steer their reactions. Yeah. Because... I don't know if they're blinded by the love of Star Wars, and I've been that way with certain fandoms. But like to me, I'm looking at the basic understanding of this, and like, why is she after Saul? Like, why does she want to kill him? What What did he do? Yeah, I think it. I think the, did he take I, his sister? Like, I think that's what the it temple is. down. I know, but I think that's what the answer is. I think the answer is probably because the, the disrupt- what we're going to get to in two more episodes of well, five minutes. No, but I think it's more so. The, the, I, the, I think we're supposed to know that it, that the reason why is because of this disruption of the life that they had. That the Jedi infiltrated. She was taught that the Jedi were not good, and that the Jedi stole her sister. And and we're going to find out from Saul there was more to it, and then she's going to go, oh. Okay, maybe I do want to be a Jedi. That's that's ultimately where they're what the old switcheroo is going to be. Now, what would be great and tragic, and they don't, I, I just can't imagine that they would they would do this. But I think what would be satisfying, and I hate to say it like this, but if OSHA eats it, and so does the stranger, right? They don't die. Yeah, and the question's okay. going to be, well, who's going to be the ruler too then? And that would go into PLD's theory of, well, there's other, there's, there's someone else out there. There's someone else out there who actually is the real Sith, and this guy was just kind of like kind of a rogue guy who was potentially so the apprentice. So what he wants is Acolyte like to take on the Sith then? He wants to replace his master and bring in another apprentice. Is what That's it, all great and well and good. Right. With two episodes left. I, that's, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. Is that this, ain't doing this that. No, this should have been the but thing. Then, yeah. Did you hear Leslie Headland's, um She said, "I think she heard the way she said it was like there's a definitive end to this season, but there's several mysteries left for a second season, something to that effect." This I'm show, like, "What? This, this show's not getting a second season? How are we? What mysteries are we doing? Yeah, this like, sh- so if they if they if they just answer why May wants to kill the Jedi, yeah, and then don't answer any other question, like." Because I, and when I'm sitting here every episode, I'm like, you really got Carrie Ann Moss for five minutes. I know. In a Star Wars show, that's what you got. So basically, you wanted to use her for credit to get people to ex- eyes on the ex- show. Exactly what they used her for. That's bullshit, it, man. Yeah, and again, I don't, I don't fault her. She just wanted no, to be in Star so Wars. Who she's wouldn't? Like, Fine. What do I got to do? I got to die. And you're going to pay me how much? Okay, that works. Yeah, but uh, like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand it. Like that, but I, like, that's what happens with a lot of these shows recently. Is as I mentioned yesterday when I did the the immediate reaction, as I mentioned here too, I think this is to me the most intriguing uh, the, out of all the stuff, and especially the one particular storyline was the one episode I was like, oh, okay, this is what the show could be. But it's frustrating because a lot of these episodes in all of these shows is like you have it. It's right. It's right there. The core is right there. The stuff we talked about it with Ahsoka, the stuff that the Obi Wan stuff. It's like it's right there, and then they make this. Other you, thing, I don't know. Well, okay, that's a great example. Do you feel that every time they go in, the core is there, but then it's like, well, it's a TV show. We got to spread this out over nine episodes. So let's add these characters and add this subplot to just. And fluff I think it. I think the less I think it's it's less of that. Like when I remember when I was when I was talking to Katie about the the episode that she did when she did her big um, speech, and it was a big like William Wallace like speech, and. 
they yeah. cut it down, they chopped it up, and it was like, you know, a, a 40 second thing, which was ultimately like a two or three minute speech or whatever yeah. it might have been. And like, it's that kind of stuff because they try to like, it's, and I think, and I have, I have, I'm not going to confirm by anybody. This is just my speculation. I think it's a felony thing. I think it's the whole George Lucas faster, more intense, this thing. It's like, and cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. And it's like, you don't have to do that. You don't like you do like this. There is writing that, and I know that you can't compare it. To, compare it to uh, uh, people say don't compare it to House of the Dragon. Don't compare it to these. It's hard shows. not to. It's hard not to because I, I don't even watch House of the Dragon. But this is what I was telling my brother the other day, right? Uh, and when I was on the phone with him, and I was saying, okay, look, I'm gonna watch. Like, I'm going. I'm. Wa it was right before I watched episode five, before I had any opinion on it, um, or six, six, and. I was like, yeah, because he's not watching the show. He's a hardcore Star Wars fan, doesn't want to watch the show. has no interest in watching it. And I am like, okay, I am going to watch this tonight. But am I excited? Am I looking forward to watching this show? And the answer is not really. No, I'm not. I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I, I know enough of this. There's that, like he's, we just said, there's that core enough that they maybe can make some stuff. That I'm like, like, like last night. I'm like, okay, that stuff is good. But, dude, when I'm watching House of the Dragon, I'm kicking back on my couch, and I don't want no one to bother me. I want to lock in Dark Matter. Same thing. I was watching Dark Matter. Don't bother me. I am locked into this thing. I, I am so in the world. I am doing, like, I, I'm just there. And that's how I wanted to be for this show, but it's just, it just hasn't done it. I'm with you in the sense that I'm, I'm fighting to not do anything else in my house when it's on. Like, right. I got to like last night. I was like, I got to mop this floor. I'll, I'll have it on. It's like, no, no, we're going to talk about the show. I got to pay attention. But then like every little thing bothers me. Like we're sitting there and get to the island and his ship is on that island. I'm like, why would he park it over there? There's water. How are they going to get to it? And then, well, like, no, you but, can well, swim wait. to oh, it. Yeah, that, I like you can that. You can let the tide go down. I'm like what kind of but, stupid thing nah, is that? No, nah, I, I, I like that. I like no, that. It's Explain nah, it I liked to me why it's stupid. I liked it. The question is, he probably knows. He probably knows how to get get to it. He probably has it figured out. But I, I like the idea that he was pretty much saying, like, "Listen, it'll take you a little bit to do it, but because he wants to keep her there, and he wants to keep her, there. he wants to have." I, I liked. I liked that kind of uh, that mental game thing that he was doing to say, "Like, hey, look, it's right there. You got to swim to it." But I, 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 I did that. That so swim you're allowed. To it. You're allowed to nitpick. You're allowed to because I did it. And I think anybody can. You, you're allowed to do it. I just think that's a major nitpick. It makes no sense. All right. No well, sense. Look, let's let's keep going through here. So this hug happens. Well, the eye acting continues, and then, um, but Saul tries again. Gets the faulty line. He's trying to have the conversation with the Jedi, and then we 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 jump to the Venestra side of it. And yeah, I'm with you, man. Like this is this is. I even said it in my reaction. I, said, I think I'm with Mike here. It's just so one note. The performance. Um, yeah. But she's like, oh, something's going on. Okay, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I mean, he looks like he should have been Breaking Bad. I mean, <laughs> who's? I mean, I who casts who casts this guy. guy as a Jedi? He's. The, I'll tell you this: the performance wasn't bad. He wasn't bad in the role. He was. He's a good actor. I no. just don't buy him as as a Jedi. But uh, but who knows? Maybe he's, maybe he's a he's a top Jedi's son and there's nepotism. You like the guy? Great, good actor. Throw some makeup on him. Or just something. Put, a, put some horns in make it. Him, some, make like, him an alien, right? Tusks or yeah, something. Right, 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 but tusks. The, the acting was great. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was good. He wasn't bad. It's just he just. It's the the look of it. And it's in the same way that when aliens are speaking basic, it drives me bananas. Yeah, it drives me bananas. And I don't, I'm not talking about like a Manestra. I'm talking about like it's a thing. Just, yeah, it's something where again, it's Star Wars. We're kind of filtered through like the one episode they had the guy i think he was from game of thrones with the red beard as a jedi yeah what happened to he that looked guy? like a jedi what happened to that guy he looked like a jedi why didn't they bring him back i thought they were gonna do something great with that guy they haven't brought like him back guy, at all again like you said the performance was fine given what he was told to do and his kind of although wait hold on you're gonna hold that hold that thought because you just made a great point me yes why didn't they use the red head guy to to do to do that stuff if you're going to a dangerous planet if you're going to bring, bring that guy bring, why aren't you bringing that guy instead of that guy like like yeah it's like the casting of some of this stuff sometimes and and it has and nothing it's the to, same casting yeah. office that has probably cast all the star wars shows so i don't unless well no 
He's not. He wasn't. I, I say I don't think they did, they cast in England. Like I think this. Was I don't here. know. I don't know. What was your What was your other point you were going to make? Um, I think we'll get to. But that 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 Master Vanessa, you're going to come with us. You get sick in hyperspace. Where did that come I from? Don't. Like what? Where did that come from? That was the one you, thing. Yes, yeah, that that line of like where I don't understand where that came from. Like why why was that necessary? You can humbly tell me when you go in hyperspace. <laughs> it's no, like, it's it like, unsettles I, me. I imagine what it's like. F- Hey, Mike, 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 you, you saying, hey, uh, I'm going to take a trip with you guys to the Valley. You sure, Mike? Last time you did, you had diarrhea. Do you want to go? He's like, why are, you, why are you bringing that I, up? I don't, I don't get diarrhea. I get uh, <laughs> My stomach gets <laughs> what, a little upset. Like, why, are you, why are you bringing what, that up? Out of nowhere. And she's more high-ranking than him. In what, what Jedi world do we have <laughs> Jedi that, like. That was such a ridiculous. The, that was such a weird line. You can't um, go into some Jedi trance when you go through hyperspace <laughs> to calm your grumbly tummy. <laughs> like, it's stupid. It was just. Yeah, like, what, that, again, li- that line. That line. Line, I was like, what? Again, what if we- this was season one of Mando, and I'm loving everything, I would have just been like, eh, whatever. But this show right, is just right. not well, got me. Okay, every little thing like that pops but in my where, head. Where where it did get me was this planet, and uh, they were back to this planet, the the ocean planet, and I really like, I guess, what the stranger is doing here, and what he's doing, he's like, he's just kind of telling her about the power that she has in in her, what she's able to do, teaching more about the, the inner workings of the Sith stuff. And she's starting to listen to it. You know, again, more eye acting, but st- still still listening to it. And then we jump back and we get to May, who's on the ship. And at this point, Saul has told her because he thinks she's Osha, hey, can you go down and see what's going on over there? And this is one, uh, another ridiculous scene, but there's this one has kind of at least this kind of Star Wars humor tone to it the shit rat comes in and starts doing karate for some reason does this ridiculous Is that what he was doing i guess so he does this ridiculous jump in the air and he's like and and then instead of biting her he stomps on her foot and here's may who was not 10 minutes ago about to stab a jedi in the back with a knife just allows she was this, killing carrie ann moss in episode one right and just allows the shit rat to stomp on her foot um so either way then the iPhone shits her face. <laughs> the iPhone takes a big shit. Was that what it was? Like it was like eh. oil. Yeah, and then it, it just like, at a, like there's there's literally she was, she looks over to it and the i and the the iPhone shits on her. So uh, that to me again, I the iPhone not thinking because take your time because why if if you if you don't have a code on you to protect yourself, and then she's gonna reprogram you. That you should have that kind of figured out but what happens she reprograms and you know she's carrying it around and she does this and she takes the iphone with her and basically says uh, you know okay now you're mine and i'm gonna it's ultimately what gives her up to saul but then we get back to the stuff that is really working in the show and that's the sith stuff and back once again to where we're getting a little bit more to where she she had said to him at one point am i your prisoner he's like no of course i'm not your prisoner and he's like he's really playing the game here to try he he realized it to where she says it's the same pitch he gave to may he's like no i miscalculated her like i dug this stuff man i dug what was going on there and the relationship with it because and i and i that's why i push back with you on the i don't feel like he's a kylo ripoff at all kylo was whiny kylo was was kind of like lost his temper at the drop of a hat yeah, this I mean, dude's calculated he's got more I, of a no i, I yeah. it's just the it's just the archetypes of what it is yeah and and to the fact that that Leslie Headland said yeah there we use kylo ren's theme for a reason like they wanted the connection there yeah, I don't you understand know, so why they use Kylo's theme. I don't he's know, not a knight they of Ren. want that connection. But he's they not a knight that... of Ren. He's a Sith. I I don't know. He's not even I'm... related to the sky. And I don't again, know why would they do that. His performance is great. When he's on screen, I'm invested in it. I believe yeah. everything he's saying. Yeah. I believe, like, I'm, I want to know more. But we've had six episodes of everything else. I'm kind of like, dude. Like, and I, it sucks. And again, we have to go off what we're given. But a Jackie Him storyline. I know. I know that would have been that would have like we we the more we talk the more you, I agree with you like the twins we do not need that at all and and the story could have been told what because you said it before what what is their story really I I to don't make know it, still like like if if you ask most people most people I think that like the show how many of them would say that Mayor Osha is their favorite character I was gonna guess if I was gonna guess I would say that right now the favorite characters in order would be Saul from most people at number one. 
I would put the stranger in as number two, and then I'd put Jackie as number three, and then I'd put Yord as number four before we even got to the I don't twins. get the hate Yord got. I like, didn't. I didn't. I mean, for me, for I, what his character I, he was, was kind of he was sticking his ass. Yeah, he he got be, he got better, but he was still annoying. But but I think but I think he had more definition as a character than they do. Like yeah. you said, we still don't know why they were killing why why May was killing Jedi. We still don't really know. Like nope. the, the, she says in this episode, at least we got a little bit of. Well, I left, and she said, did you? They won't let me come back. Really? Like that's kind of what we we got a little bit more of that. Yeah. But um. But yeah, they're just not. They're just. It, I just don't understand the reason why we needed them. I think that you had. I think that you could have had a more detailed forty-minute show between the, and, and the actors that you would have had, and because Daphne Keene is great. And then yeah. like we, it's like uh, you know what? We'll get to it when we when we see. I think it's coming up soon, but we'll, we'll get back to that in just a minute. Um, but you stay on the planet, and this to me was the best scene of the entire episode, and I really like this scene where. He's continuing to taunt her, and she has the saber in her hand, and he and she goes to stick it in his chest, and he goes, no, and he walks closer to it, and I loved his performance here. Again, cool, calm, calculated. He's like, no, do it here. He puts it closer to his chest, and then he puts it up closer to his face, and at any moment, she could turn it on. He's saying, basically, he's telling her to do it. And then she does turn it on, puts it to his neck, and he's not, he doesn't even flinch. And the conversation, I love this look on his face. This was my favorite scene. It's probably my favorite scene in the entire show. And it's Ooh. because of what, it's so far, because of what he's done. And this, it, it's because, Mike, as I was just saying, it's memorable. If you said to me, like, okay, name me one memorable scene from the Acolyte, I don't necessarily know what the memorable scenes were before. But I could tell you right away, I'll tell you the memorable scene when they were on that planet and he's taunt and not taunting her, but he's just getting deeper, deeper into the anger and the emotion and what a Sith is all about. The show that was pitched. And then she puts the saber up to his neck and he's telling her to to Palpatine, do it, do it. Yeah. But he knows she's not going to do it because that's just another level for her to get to the dark side. It was a great scene. It was a great scene. I loved the scene. It doesn't, unfortunately cancel out the other silliness that we're talking about in it because but it does for me say at the end of it because of scenes like this like, how do you someone said on my reaction how do you like this episode there's so much going on that's crap writing agreed but there is so much that's going on like that if you give me something like that and you had moments like that in every episode to where you actually gave me what this show was pitched upon i'd probably be talking about this show differently yeah i get you yeah so this is a great scene. I really do. I think it's one of the more memorable scenes we've seen in Star Wars TV in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and she's got the saber to his face. And then we jump back to Coruscant. And this is where we get the diarrhea scene. So where the accountant basically goes, hey, we know what's going on. The whole team's wiped out. And she's like, ah, oh, I got to go. And he's like, yeah, but you shit yourself last time we were on the we were on the airplane. And she's like, oh, I only shit myself when, when, I, when I ate the bad fish. And so then... We jump back to the, <laughs> the ship scene. <laughs> and like, where? Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Yeah. So, I, I, Are we at this point now? When, when she got so the I'll ship? So stay where you are. Oh, no. yeah. No. Boom. <laughs> they come right back in. Are you? I know. What the? I know. Come on, I was man. Like, can, I, I think I said when I was watching, I go, convenient. <laughs> you know, it's like, What'd you say? No, convenient. But we, we, like, we're at, but, but has to, that hasn't happened yet. That hasn't yet happened yet. Right now, because May right now is still pretending that she's Osha. And finally, Sol realizes it because of the iPhone. And oh, I thought Shivrat was the one that told them. I don't no? think... No, the Shivrat didn't do anything. The Shivrat just knew for himself. He kept the so information from himself. Know? The iPhone didn't know. Uh, oh, you mean... Oh, before, I think the... Well, the iPhone was programming. He, he, he can tell. He's got better senses than Saul. And so Saul... No, yeah, the iPhone knew, but not Saul. No, like, Saul... How did Saul know? I think Saul knew once he, was ta he started talking to her about about the iPhone. And he was like, the way that you, he's like, oh, you got it to work again. And the way that you comfort this thing, the, the way that you are with this thing. And then he realized it through that conversation. See, that exchange. No, I thought, then she goes, she, he stuns her. And then shit rat pops up. I thought shit rat off camera had a talk like this ain't her. No, the, the shit rat didn't know what he was doing. The shit rat, the shit rat was then looking. Why did for, the shit rat attack him? Attack her? Um, because the shit rat knew, but the, that's my point. Why didn't the shit rat tell Saul? 
It, I think he did, but it, no. I think it happened off camera. Again, did it? But again, I, they don't want the scene of him going, bah, 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 and Saul's like, what? And then it's more dramatic to I, just yeah, I, I didn't. I'm curious to see what the audience thinks about that, because I, yeah, I didn't. Audience, I, let us I know. Was it uh, yeah. shitbot or piss rat? Or... <laughs> shitbot or piss rat. <laughs> piss rat. Who, who, who ratted it out? Hey, <laughs> who did Saul. it? Or did Saul just figure it out on his own the, the finally? The computer or a shit rat knew more than a Jedi <laughs> that this is a different person. Who was it? <laughs> who was it? And so... Yeah, we get back to so this. She's about to make the phone call and say something. She's like, "Who is this?" And then she's about to tell you, and then she gets shot in the back once again. She's been shot seventy five different times with the stun ray, <laughs> and she, she and then the, the, well, I don't know. You look at this picture. The shit rat looks like. Wait a minute. You just you just you just took her out. What's happening? Um, and See, then I took that as shit. Where I was like, ah, you yeah, listen to me. You got her. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Either way, I'm I'm curious to hear what everybody says. But once again, for the eighth time in the show, May gets knocked out. Um, and then this is where Saul decides, okay, I got to get the hell out of here. He does. He flies into hyperspace and Mike's favorite moment of the show happens. They leave and then the show, the ship shows up right away. Um, and then we get Vinestra showing up and the guys are still playing chess in the background. Um, the this, this scene, dude, irked. Which one? What we're coming to. Okay. Oh, so first I know. Of all, we, I know why. I love I know how every saying. time they yeah. walk by this forest, they set it up like it's the full, like it's the impending doom. This forest is like haunted every time they show up, and then those poor <laughs> moths—they're just flying around, and people are killing them they're left killing and them right. Killing them left and right. It's true. But so, boy, well, we're not there yet because we jump oh, back. God damn it! Sorry, buddy. So you jump back, and now this is where he starts telling her about the mask. Which oh yeah, I li- I liked the scene. You didn't like it. I liked it. Yeah, I. I I like I like the idea that he knows and we know she's gonna put the thing on and he's like what in the idea of what it does and to be in like the meditation space and the consciousness side of it. Like this was this I I, I kind of wished in the same way that you remember that uh that episode that everybody lost their mind with in um it, what was it? So was, it Man- was it Mandalorian season three when they had that full episode that was just on Coruscant? They had- what was the episode about? Uh, it was with the one with Katie O'Brien, and it was like it just it w- it seemed like something out of Andor, and it just it was just this full episode that was just completely different. Then I oh. wish that this episode and this would and this would have been actually a very different. This would have been more uh, in in tune with the show itself. I wish the whole episode would just been these two on the island. I wish the whole thing was just the two of them I on the island. Yeah, yeah. Um, because this stuff that they're talking about here. When they're when he's talking about the helmet and the consciousness side of it and being there and, and tuning into the force and and what the the mask is actually able to do, it gives you a reason why these Sith are wearing these things, even when they're because Vader, we know why Vader was wearing it. He was messed up. Yeah. He couldn't but it enhanced it enhanced his dark side abilities once he was in it because it was just he was so contained and within his own thoughts and everything too and it, it angered him more it brought in the passion it did all that stuff and and he needed it in order to live um but kylo didn't need it but he but he used it and it's the same and you get a little bit more of that explanation through it and i i thought it was a relevant scene yeah i i have nothing to say on that because it's good like i just okay you don't want to talk I, about I, the good things well, I, th- I think it was. It's interesting to see something different. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we get we get that scene, and we get yeah. that it looks like okay. So then she's curious about it. So this is now. Now this is this was the most heartbreaking thing for me because they okay. open back up, and here's dead Jackie laying on the floor, and I go, "This is this to me reminded me of a Marvel multiverse," because I'm going, "This is the star of your show." Who's dead by episode five? And if it was, you know, it, my multiverse, she's not laying there dead. She's they're trying to figure out how to get her back from the dark side, right? Instead, here she is, dead. Um, and then they they see her. They're doing an investigation. No one says, "Hey, they left a left a whole bunch of Jedi bodies here." We didn't teach that at the Jedi Temple. Well, here's here's Jackie. She's dead, and here's poor Yord. Yord's crapped out too. They show these two, and then they go, well, how about let's walk a little closer, a little farther out, and who's that? Ah, a bunch of extras. Who gives a crap? Nobody did. And All right, fine. And this is where we hear her, and she's and now these are the thoughts going on, and she can hear it, and she can figure out everything that's going on, and she even asks the accountant. She's like, what's what, what happened here? 
He's like, somebody very powerful came in. Okay. It, the, the, what is it? The, the jig is up. It's it. We, we, it's it. We know the Sith are back. It's over. Right? But again, everyone will be like, well, we didn't say Sith. We didn't say Sith. For, to me, Someone powerful enough with a saber mowing down Jedi. people? I mean, come on. I, 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 dude, so I see this scene. And last episode, I'm like, what are you talking about? How does, how does Saul leave these bodies here? Like, no world would a Jedi leave his fallen brothers behind. And again, he wasn't chased out of there. He wasn't running for his life. I got to get off this planet. I'll regroup. No, he was like strolling. Hey, guys, playing chess. Don't worry about those bodies. They'll decompose. But the reason they did that, and it's a it's a terrible writing thing, is because they need to blame Saul. Oh, Saul turned bad? He killed these people? Right. That's the only reason the bodies were left there, and he didn't take them. Yeah, but why did he make the so phone call then? But, why, on the writing. but yeah. why does he make the phone call if you're them? I mean, you got to be— But they did Jedi, make the phone call, Jedi but are didn't, morons. But they it, didn't go all the way through. He didn't say Sith. These Jedi are morons. Because um, if he would have said, hey, there's Sith, they show up. This is what Saul was talking about. Holy shit, we're in trouble. Nope. It is the right. And again, I don't usually critique writing in a show because it's not my thing. But it's ha everything happens because it a writer wants to do something that ha like it, this makes they're suddenly going to think Saul killed all these Jedi. For what reason? Yeah, I don't know if they do. And then they that, do say that, so, though. I know, but I don't think that they think it. And Maybe, he's like, the count's like, well, it is possible he might kill them. I why? Know. But they they think it right. The why is the is the great question. Now, a lot of people that I've saw in the comments section, and you actually said this not too long ago, think that there's one of two things going on with Vanessa. One, she is the ex master Jedi master of the stranger, and okay. she was the one who ousted him. Right. That's that's part one. Part two is or not part two. Option two rather is that she is actually the Sith Lord that... Now, does this... And again, I don't know. Vanestra, does this... Because she's well-known in the High Republic does comics... It, does it negate her... Does it negate everything know. that she I is? I don't know enough about it. Because I'll tell you this. Laura Kelly, you know Laura, of course. Yeah, of course. She is a huge High Republic fan. Like, yes. I, this girl loves the High Republic. Yeah. And I saw a tweet from her last night. She's like, yeah, this show just might not be for me. Wow. Really? Yeah. So I not when I uh, wow go to Star Wars okay. like people like her I love her opinions because she loves what she loves yeah but when stuff doesn't work she's like mm, this ain't working but I know she loves the High Republic that is her see I'm jam. not usually on the same page with her on a lot of this stuff but she's because she, night, she wasn't, didn't like Andor. wasn't attacking the episode she just said it just might not be for me fair fair enough to say so um, I think she probably would love these characters because they're High Republic so I don't, I don't know. know man yeah who who knows but. Nonetheless, she's got something going on. Both her and Saul have a lot more going on, and we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon what it is. But we get to the next shot, and guess what? May's sleeping. But she wakes up, as she does the other nine times or whatever it was. So she wakes up, and this time Saul's kind of staring at her in the corner, and she, he says, okay, May, I know it's you. So here's the thing. You're going to sit there, and you're going to listen to my story, and I'm going to tell you off screen. And then, great, perfect. So he does, and she's like, all right. And this is, I think, the turning point for May to when we finally get that she's going to be, she's going to realize that there's more to it. And the way that they cut, I was glad. They, they duped me a little bit because they cut that shot, and I'm like, that's the end of the episode? He's like, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to listen. And it goes black, and you're like, that's the end of the episode? Are you kidding me? But it isn't. It wasn't. It goes back to now. I, I'm torn with this scene, and I, and I know and I'm, I'm very torn with this scene. So here's the mask, and we know the second you cut to it, okay, she's about to put the mask on. Yeah, this is one of those things where, and this is very similar to where I don't know was I talking to you about the Dark Knight Rises recently? Were we talking about it? Because I've Not been talking. I'll talk about that. I've been talking about it. I love that movie. I love that movie. And there's so many people who crap on that movie. I love that movie. I do too. I like it. The worst part of that film, everybody will agree, is um, Marion Cotillard's death. Oh. It, it's insanely stupid. And How he kept that take in that, there. That's what everyone says. That is what every single person says is that's Christopher Nolan. How the, And I, yeah, I made a joke about it the other day. I said, the one day I go on vacation, let you guys choose the shot. And 
The reason I bring that up is something that happens in this episode that uh, in this particular scene that to me hurts, hurts what they're trying to do with it. So you get this scene. Here's the mask. And she's like, okay, am I going to put it on? We know she's going to put it on. She puts it on and they do like the kind of, you know, the Vader thing and she's breathing as she's got it on. And then they show a shot of her with it on and it looks like my six-year-old with my Yankees hat on. It's like, it looks so silly, this shot. It's like this little body with this big, huge head and it's not, it's not, it's not intimidating. It looks, it looks ridiculous. And I'm like, oh, no, just shoot it differently. I know what you're going for here. And, and, and the, this is like her path to potentially dipping her feet in the dark side. And it's working. I, I'm on board with it. But but, th- or, but look at that. Or what you do is, like, again, this goes back to every department on the show being on the same page. Build a smaller helmet. Right. That when it goes on her head, it looks he, normal. He built one for her. He yeah. built one for her, and he said, "Here, this is. I've had this. I was. Oh no, I don't or, even need or, that. Or he had it for his sister. Her sister and her sister didn't do it. Whatever it might be. When her, like, I feel oh, like no, what, no. But but he he can't do a smaller one if it's his helmet. He's but gotta, you, but, the, but the audience wouldn't know that. I, I see what you're saying. Like just you know to, just, it's just the same thing like with the just horns taken off. It, it if it was going to be the horn girl, I, see, I hear what you're saying. He built a different helmet, so just right. for the shot, right. it looks on her body right. normal. It looked, it just, it really did. I felt like I like when I, when my when my kid puts on my hat, and it was like, yeah. oh, it looks cute. But that's not what, that's cute. what that's not what you want there. No, you, you want it to go. Oh yeah, I could see I could see yeah. this happening. But either way, the um, you got this whole entire thing to where I did say, and I stand by it, that the reason why I responded to this episode in those particular scenes is because the stuff, when they announced this show in 2020, when they announced this show, they pitched those moments that we saw here today in this episode. Yeah. That's what they pitched. And they delivered on that. It just, as Mike said, is it too little too late? It might be. because the, it, Just because I liked a few of these you know, if you ask me, did you now because you liked those scenes? Do you do you think that this is a this is a good series? No, there's just too, the writing is just you. You said it, Mike. The writing, I, and I and I I thought when it started that the writing could actually be pretty layered, and it just it just hasn't been. But this episode was fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't think we're gonna I win. Got you two over. more. We're gonna. Do I'm you, gonna finish it. Do you but. think? You think they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna be able to turn this around with Skeleton Crew? No. No. Oh, you don't think Skeleton, so? skeleton Crew? crew. Not. No. I think Skeleton Crew is gonna be 180 degrees different type of thing. Agreed. That's I think what it's I'm gonna saying. be like you said, Goonies in space. I, and and if they do that and they nail it and John Watts hits it, you're gonna get two like, guys like us to. Here's to a perfect be on board example. In Skeleton Crew, just going just going off what the tone is, what they're saying. That I want. Piss bot and shit rat stepping on people's toes and right. spooting oil in people's face. Well, that fits that. But remember what he told us though. He said just because it has kids in it, he said I he know. said look look at it more of a Stranger Things meets Goonies thing is what he said to us outside. I get it. And I'm looking forward to that Amblin kind of feel for yeah. it. You know what was that movie that they did that J.J. Abrams movie that they did the Super Eight. Right. That movie. Yeah, it, that was good. It was. It was. It, it did, but it. It was good, but it didn't hit in the way like mainstream. Like like the fact that I had to think of the title, you know what I mean? It's like there's not. Yeah. It's, it's not as it, that movie could have been so mainstream in that J. trying J. to Abrams get that is feel. An interesting filmmaker because I really like love. I love his Star Trek. I love his Mission yeah. Impossible, but his Star Wars and then at Super Eight, yeah. where he's trying to recapture, right? Recapture yeah. something that he loved. Yeah, it just doesn't because it's not coming. It's just a weird right, right. But I, but I, I wonder. How John because John Watts is clearly going to try to recapture that feel. I mean, look, you don't watch Stranger Things, but Stranger no. Things does recaptures the eighties brilliantly. Yeah. Like brilliantly. And it recaptures it with music and in and in wardrobe and in everything that it in tone, it recaptures it wonderfully. And I hope that John Watts can recapture that. And that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Because that comes out what, at the end of the year, right? Skeleton crew? I think so. I think so. Yeah. So We'll have more to talk about, but we, I mean, it is, it's a bummer that that's what we're already looking forward to, but I would, yeah. I'm, I'm right now. And even, and this is me saying as someone who liked this episode, I'm putting this in with, with book of Boba Fett in the cellar. Yeah. 
I mean, it probably, I mean. Yeah, once this show's done, I'm not going to revisit it. Yeah, because I can I can still, I mean, I don't like the Obi-Wan series, but there's, I, I'm, I'd be lying if I said I didn't go back and watch the fights a couple different times with the two of them. And, and I, I usually watch the recut ones that the fans do with the music and stuff in them, but I still do, but I still yeah. watch them. Um, but I don't know. There's, it, I, I'm, I'm hoping that in episode seven and episode eight of this show, we get a more of the backstory with what's going on with the Sith in general. Let's play that. Let's just let's just stick with that, and let's get some more dark stuff happen. That's what I want to see. I want to see a dark ending. So anyway, yeah. uh, Mike, you're on fire in this episode. Where can I find you? <laughs> uh, at Mike Kalinowski. Twitter, Instagram, same thing. Perfect. All right, Steph will be back soon, guys. Thank you for joining us here on the show. As always, make sure you comment. Get the people talking. Get us in the get, get the algorithm helping us out. Let more people see what we're doing over here. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. Thank you to all our wonderful sponsors. Make sure you get one of those lightsabers, man. Do that. And the tushies. Do that, too. All right. Thanks for joining us on the show. From Mike Kalinowski, I'm me. You're you.